Well, this is Sunday, August 17th, I think, but it may be the 18th. I'm, I can't keep up with the days anymore. I saw a very, <clears throat> excuse me, interesting and, in my opinion, enlightening TikTok on my Facebook page, and I'm not able to share that here on YouTube. And instead of just reading the one verse which she read i will begin with that first peter 4:18 says and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear um i had heard this a long time ago it's a very good message if i can figure out how to share that message from her I will do that, but it did get me, I do this with sermons, I do this with things that I, or sermons that I'm listening to, and sometimes I will pause them and look the information up and read the, you know, I read it right along with them. Let me read this chapter, bear with me, for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in the lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, you know, just party and living it up, living our best lives, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot or dissipation, you know, speaking evil of you. They make fun of us that try to do the, the right thing in the will of God. Now verse 5, Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an, an evildoer, or as a busybody in the other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at 
the house of God. That means it begins in those of us that call ourselves Christians, that profess to be Christians. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, the church. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And here's what I, the verse I started with. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them suffer according to the will of God, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. All right, that's hard to unpack for most of us, and I'm not any difference. I've had hard times throughout my Christian walk to understand what certain things mean, but I'm trying to dig in, <clears throat> excuse me, deeper and deeper. What concerns me for most of us Christians, and I mean even those that never miss a service, um, they're just as sweet as they can be, but what concerns me for all of us, how many times have we heard our friends, and I heard one of my friends yesterday, and she did it in love, she said it in love, Karen, you're too hard on yourself, God knows we're not perfect, Jesus knows you're not perfect, and he doesn't expect us to be. Well, if we are not careful, we're making excuses in advance to cover we're not good, we're not perfect. We're supposed to ever be striving, ever be striving to get closer and closer to being perfect. No, I chances are very good that by the time, if I was 200 years old, whenever I left this world, I would still not be perfect. We are to strive for to live as Christ, who was perfect. That should be what we strive to do. Should we, can we be too hard on ourselves? Now that one I'm not sure of. And you know why I'm not? Because Paul quite often would talk about himself as being the chief of sinners. But yet Paul was one of the most, if not the most, instrumental teachers in the entire New Testament. So can we be too hard on ourselves? Perhaps. Perhaps. I don't know. But I do know that I'm supposed to strive to be as much like Christ as I can. I may not be as good as I should be, but thank God in heaven and thank Jesus' holy name, I'm not as bad as I once was. So this haphazard, lackadaisical thing of, oh, don't worry about it. No one is perfect. There's not a perfect preacher anywhere. At what point are we crossing a line and accepting less than? I hope I'm saying this like the Lord wants me to say. At what point are we accepting less than what we should be going for, what we should be striving for? And if my preacher, this is even taught in the Bible, if my preacher at my church is as bad or worse than me, and has the worst sons and daughters and, and wife and marriage of any of us, then he's not supposed to be in the pulpit. Is he supposed to be perfect? No, he's not. And there are certain times to lift them up in prayer. But we are living in a day, I hate to say this, we live in a day that there are pastors, pastors that are committing adultery, they're committing fornication if they're not married. They are committing uh, sexual perversions is the way I'm going to say it. Some of them are so open and away from their scriptures that they'll, they'll even talk like there's we're all talking about the same God and the same Jesus. We're just calling him a different name. No, we are not. Step down. You're not a good preacher. You're not a good preacher if you're not bringing it back. And tying it to the word of God. Is he perfect? No, he's not. But there comes a time, step down while you get your heart and your soul back in order before you possibly take back up the role of pastor. So are we being too critical on ourselves? I think not. This verse kind of says, 
if it's going to be this hard for those of us that claim to be Christians, how much harder is it going to be for the others? And for those that are new Christians, if all they hear is, we are all sons of God, don't worry about it, say a little prayer and you'll never be plucked from Jesus' hands, we're just being a little bit... I don't know how many of you have ever done target practice or was ever a hunter, but if you have a scope, for example, you 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 can um, adjust that scope and you you key it in, you you line it up to center point. Well, if it's even one degree off, if it's two degrees off, if it's whatever, you see what I'm saying? It don't take long before you've missed the dead center. You may still kill your prey, but with each one degree off. We're a little bit further, and we're a little bit further from the center. The Bible tells us how to maintain center. Center focus on Christ. It's right here in the Bible. And there are so many things that we have slowly, one degree here, one degree there. Um, the, the Lord has put it on my heart. I've said this over and over, and I'm so sorry to always repeat myself. Un until 2019 or 2020, I wasn't the seeker of truth that I am now. And I'm retired, and it's like the Lord has put me in the perfect place and given me a very inquisitive mind to question some of these things that I had been taught, that all of us had been taught. And since I stand on His promises that if I ask for wisdom and knowledge, He will impart it to me, and He is, I suggest that we all do this. We start off one degree off. Okay, so look at a pastor that you think, well, no, he's not perfect. He's just a man. He's one degree off. Well, doesn't that mean that he's also possibly one degree off in how he presents the Bible to us? So his plate, if he's the one serving our spiritual food and he's off a degree or two here or a degree or two there, won't it kind of affect us and our spiritual focus? Um, should he be condemned? Should No, 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 no. Neither should we. But this business of, well, you need to forgive yourself because we're all human. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We should hold to a little bit higher standard. Yes, it's hard. There's scripture after scripture that tells of things. It's not a, a cakewalk. I've said again, God can heal, but is he going to heal in every situation? No, he may choose to, he may not. He may grant certain people to have wealth and have a nice home, but I about guarantee you he's mainly going to do that with people that he knows is going to share their talents, their, their rewards, their gifts. We're all called to do such things, and right now I'm trying to focus on what Bible is telling me to do. Not what Brother Joe Schmo said or Sister this and that said. I want to go back to the Word of God. I keep saying this over and over. Um, I think we need to be more serious and more dedicated than ever before because let's be honest. I know Christians that if they think they've even hurt one person's feeling, they've got 2,000 friends on Facebook, everybody loves and adores them, but they also never speak of Christ. They never say, well, the Bible says this. We never minister. Is that what we're supposed to be doing here in these latter days? And I'm asking, I really am not being judgmental because I don't know you and you don't know me. I do know I am very corrupt, even whenever I try not to be. I think it's time of all times to come back to God. Look at little things. Why are there so many churches celebrating trick-or-treat and calling it trunk-or-treat? Why are so many churches celebrating? Now, this is tough for me. I'm going to tell you, hard for me whenever I learned Easter, Easter is a pagan not Resurrection, not Resurrection Sunday. We're celebrating something and we're calling it Easter. You need to do your homework. We're celebrating something called Chris 
Christmas. And we were taught and told that, yes, that's the celebration of Christ's birth. Yes, it is. But it's also be done in a pagan way. We can celebrate Christ's birth without doing it in the way we're doing. Um, in my search for truth, biblical truth, biblical truth, I asked this one time years ago, and I'm hoping to do another video fairly soon about this. Why do certain churches do Sunday whenever the Bible talks about Sabbath? Do some research, people. I Here again, I am 69 years old. My whole life I've taken certain things that I've heard, and I've taken it for granted. I haven't researched and see why do we do this, why do we do that, why do the Jews celebrate on this day, and why does the Bible say... And on the seventh day, God rested. Hold to the fab, uh, the Sabbath and keep it holy. All right, why are we... Anyway, I highly recommend, get your souls ready. See what the Bible says, not what Karen says. And I've never told anybody, follow me. Follow me for more good advice. Not whenever it comes to the Bible. I will say, do not follow me. Follow the Bible. Hear what it says. And again, back to how many degrees off do we have to be before we are no longer saved? We are no longer a Christian in good standing. How many degrees off? Slowly, slowly, slowly before we miss the marks. The Bible says in so many different passages, in so many different ways, you shall know them by their fruits. Well, what are the fruits? What are the fruits I have? What are the fruits that you have? You need to be looking at these things because many, many, many of us are going to think we are saved. And sadly, we're going to think that right up until we stand before God. Read what the Bible says refocus refocus your dial to dead center refocus back to Jesus to dead center and you can only do that by using the Bible and prayer I would hate to think that myself or you or any of us missed heaven by a fraction because it don't matter if you missed it by one degree or a thousand miles. Missing heaven means you've hit hell. Okay? I love you guys. We are in some very, very uncertain times. I'm trying to bring my scope back to center. But you do you. Think about certain things. I hope to have another video soon. Um, I don't know how I let the time get away from me. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this to Philippians two twelve. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And that doesn't mean salvation is by works. It means dig, dig, study, study. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John eight thirty two. And I'm going to, I've read this a lot. John fourteen six. Jesus Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if there's anyone out there, I don't want to call preachers' names. I really don't. I want to so bad. But if there's anyone out there that's telling you, big mega church preachers or ex preachers, that there's we're all worshiping the same God. Back away. Please step away. Please come away from them because they will send, have you go straight to Satan, the father of this world. I love you guys. I don't know if anybody's still here, but have a good one. God loves you. Jesus loves you so, so much. And one day, you won't be able to hear anybody share that. You may not even have a Bible anymore. So you need to learn these things now. Learn some of these scriptures. That's spiritual warfare. Have yourself some scriptures for your, your warfare that's coming. Love you guys. Bye.